Hello everyone, um, Mike all on, good to go, awesome. Hi everyone, uh, tonight we are going to be continuing um, from last week when we uh, interviewed Grant about self-care and looking after ourselves in COVID-19. Um, and I have with myself three lovely guests who are going to be having a chat to me um, about some of that stuff. So I'd like to just go down the line if you would love to introduce yourself um, and maybe a little bit about what you do during the week for people that might not know. Sure, so I'm Amelia. Uh, I'm an occupational therapy student and I work part-time at the moment. My name's James or Morgs. Um, I am both uh, working as a teacher um, at Carlingford West Public School, um, but also studying um, full-time with a master's in information services or librarianship. Hi, I'm AJ. I am also a teacher. I'm at the Ponds Special School. I teach uh, junior primary and I'm also studying part-time a master's in inclusive and special education. Awesome. Um, and one, que one question I'm going to spring on you guys that I didn't inform you about before. Um, if you were a sandwich, what sandwich would you be and why? Good question. It's a tough question. Really gets to the heart of <laughs> getting to know people. I feel. Yeah. Um. I feel like I would be a. Was coming to me as a Nutella sandwich, um, because I love chocolate, and I feel like it's a good combination of sweet and savory. I guess. See, I'm going to go the different route and go curried egg because it'll be the last one left and I don't get eaten. <laughs> I think, yeah, yeah. Ham salad and mustard because it's tasty, it's full of good stuff and it's got a little bit of spice. Phil, no one likes curried egg. <laughs> um, I don't know, I think I'd probably pick Nutella as well just because I eat a lot of Nutella. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess to start off, um, just generally, how have you guys been going um, and how have you guys been um, particularly trying to look after yourself during lockdown? Are there any things in particular that you've been doing to make sure that you're going okay? Yeah, so at the moment I've, I've only got two weeks left of uni, so that's very exciting, but it's also very nerve wracking just because um, like next year getting a full-time job and trying to find that so I guess it's good and scary at the same time um I guess during this time what I've been doing I've been going on a lot of walks I don't think I used to do that before or at least getting outside every day to get some fresh air which I always find um really helpful to get outside and just be in nature I guess um I've also I guess every day this is something new i never did before which I do now when I get to bed um I kind of lie there and I kind of think about what was really good that day or like what didn't go so well um and maybe like why it didn't go so well it kind of like calms me down before I get to sleep um which I always find really helpful and then if I am really stuck on like a thought or like why I felt that way then I'll I'll usually like pray about it or like um meditate on that thought for a little while What was the question again? How are you going? Have you been doing anything in particular to look after yourself? Um, I think because I'm at a school, I'm sort of kept very busy with that and sort of uni work. So I haven't really slowed down for normal life or for COVID life, I guess. Um, so not much has changed except for sort of a few different roles here or there. Um, but definitely sort of getting out of the house in terms of exercise and bits and pieces sort of really is beneficial, making sure you don't, because days tend to slip by very quickly when you're forced to stay indoors. Um, so making sure you try and get out as much as can and should be doing at the moment, just so you're not sort of stuck in that same routine over and over again. Mm -hmm. The same as a teacher, I find 
Uh, we've constantly got things changing, things that are changing on us. Like, you know, one minute we're teaching from home in lockdown and then the next minute we're back at school and we're given, you know, 24 hours notice perhaps. And, um, you know, then we're, we're teaching dance and we're teaching choir and then those things are cancelled. So mm. um, the I think the uncertainty can be a little bit daunting. So for me, I have my routine. Um, for me, I'm finding that that I self-regulate through exercise. So I get up at 4.30 every morning to exercise and having that routine and having that like physical exertion at the start of the day um, is kind of what calms me and gets me ready to go. Yeah, th the reason I get up at 4.30 wow. <laughs> is my trainer said to me, get up an hour before everyone else is up so you don't get distracted. And there are young children in my household, um, my brother and sister-in-law's kids. So I get up at 4.30 mm -hmm. because the oldest of the young ones sometimes is up at 5.30. So that's my my new rise time. <laughs> Yeah, definitely and it, not it, do that. Um, it just um, keeps me calm for the day with any any unexpected curveballs that you know the mm. stress of twenty twenty teaching might throw at me. I guess I should have added beforehand as well. Um, feel free to answer any of these questions in the comments as well, um, and have a chat in the comments while we're going. Um, I guess so. Going on from that, is there anything in particular that you found you've missed during lockdown during COVID nineteen? Um, I know as a student, um, I've, I guess I've missed all like the last hurrahs of uni and like the graduation days mm. and um, those sort of things, which I'm not too fussed about, but I guess it's just something that I've missed. Um, uh, I guess something else that I miss is probably uh, like going out and not really thinking like where I'm going. It's like. I'm not consciously being like, where am I going today? Do I need to have my mask? Do I? Is it going to be lots of people there? Like, I or like, is it safe for me to go to that place? Um, I guess I never really thought about that before. Um, and I guess a few parties, I guess, like the more larger social gatherings, which you'd see people that you might not normally always see, but it's always good to see those people. Yeah, I guess I've missed those things. Um, for me, a lot of it's about sort of the routine of going to church and sort of youth group every week. Because um, I think having done that for so long, it's kind of, you feel it when you miss it. Um, but then also, I mean, Swans having just finished this afternoon, it's it, not being able to go to the games this year was interesting. You know, only being able to watch on TV. But it was, yeah. Yeah, do you know when the last footy season where you hadn't been to a Swans game was, if any? Um, probably when I was about four. Right. <laughs> so I've pretty much been every year for yeah. the past sort of 20 something years. Yeah. Dancing in public. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess has, has there any, has there been anything surprising that someone else has done for you? Um, that's been a real positive for you, um. Um, there was on two occasions, people from Bible study rocked up at my front door, which is really nice. Um, just with like a little goodie bag with some things, which was, uh, I thought it was really, uh, yeah, nice just to, it felt good that other people were like thinking about everyone in the group, um, making sure we we're doing all okay. That was quite surprising. Um, I think for me, um, School has been a big support just because teachers have, have really sort of all been in it together. Um, and so just the chat and sort of stuff that's been going on there has been really positive. Um, just making sure we're all sort of getting through it and everybody's supported and, and going okay because we do have to be at work and it's it's just an interesting sort of time. But yeah. Mm. Yeah, when I was working from home, I had colleagues um, uh, that would check in with me just like... I would have people call me or message me just to say, you know, we feel like you're a bit out of the loop. We just want to see how you are and make sure you're okay. And that was gold because I found like when you are an extrovert and when you are used to working in a room full of people, 
um, I work with small people, uh, small people, but also a teacher's aide and interacting with colleagues all the time. Um, and then suddenly you're at home and your only interaction is a Zoom meeting. And if everyone's connection's bad, then, you know, that's not going to go well. Um, that was gold for me, just having people check in and um, colleagues that would um, would Zoom with me for lunch, like just like other working from home colleagues. We'd have our lunch break together or our coffee break together and just have a catch up and a chat. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. And I guess like a lot of the changes that we've had, some of them have actually been positive so i guess are there any, are there any other big changes that you've found um over the last six months or so that have actually ended up being really good really positive for you yeah i think similar to aj i've i feel like my friendship groups um have been like checking in each, on each other a lot more um and really mindful that we aren't seeing each other all the time so yeah just a lot of a lot more messages and checking in how our well-being is and if we are going through something to talk about it with each other. Um, for me, I think it's just yeah, the general discussion um, with people that I wouldn't necessarily have had those conversations with previously have been quite um, interesting because it's come a bit more to the fore with a lot of the things that have been going on. Um, and I think that's quite positive and that's a good change that it's not um, as much as it didn't necessarily sort of languish in the dark sort of areas. Um, but it was kind of almost an unspoken thing, whereas now um, it definitely has been brought out a bit more. I've had the opportunity to collaborate with people musically more. Um, that's been really good. Um, whether that be like because I'm finding that friends will have more time for me to go sit in their living room and have a jam with them or, um, you know, doing doing stuff on garage band with people like yourself Jonty and um also doing like did a music video with um with Uniting Creative um so yeah being able to collaborate musically I've got some other other projects I'm working on with other musicians as well so that's been actually really nice and a really positive thing yeah yeah awesome um, we talked a little bit before about what you guys all kind of do during the week with work or whatever it is that you do. Um, and you started talking a little bit about how some of that might have changed. What What are the biggest changes that you've found in your workplace or, or um, you're not still at uni, are you? Are you are? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, you'll probably have a good answer for this then. Um, what are those huge changes that have happened to you and how have you dealt with them? How might you deal with them? differently if you could go back and do it again? Um, so for me, COVID hit right in sort of the middle of semester one, but I had actually finished uni for semester one and was going on placement. I was really fortunate to actually be able to go on my placement still, which was, yeah, which was really lucky. Um, so yeah, my first semester didn't really change very much, but my second semester has all been online, which is, it's very it's very different because you don't have those little kind of connections with the teacher or with the other students that you would have or like the little conversations you would have um, with each other to kind of check that we are on the right page. Like you guys are teachers, so you're coming from the other perspective. But um, yeah, so that's been challenging. I work as um, a swimming teacher and we shut down for four months. Um, which and I teach kids um, with disability, so that was really hard for them. And coming back, we've all noticed a lot of like regression in their skills, um, just because they haven't been able to swim for so long. And then I do another part-time job as a support worker, which actually didn't change at all, as she still required full-time um, support and her parents still worked full-time, so that didn't change as much. Yeah. Um, in terms of changes, I think, um, I mean, uni stayed very the same because I was already doing online work, um, so it was all exactly the same, didn't shift, uh, but I think the the expectations within that changed because I think a lot of the lecturers um, very much took a view of make sure you're okay, don't stress the small things, mm. um, 
and so the just the the dynamic and the shift in that was um quite interesting um and then work changed because i was i was still on on site but a lot of like there were almost no students on site which was an interesting sort of phenom phenomenon um being at a school of around 1700 students down to about 40 um was quite uh, a shift I had the same experience with uni, um, which I was really grateful for, that the focus became on well-being first. Make sure you're okay first. If you can't get an assignment in, if you can't attend a lecture because you're having a tough day or because, you know, in my situation I was learning um, multiple types of technology and researching multiple ways to um, facilitate my parents to teach their kids from home like to allow my parents to facilitate their students learning from home and also I was I became an emotional support person for my parents my students parents so that was this massive learning curve so then uni basically were like yeah well-being first um, let us know if you're stressed and you know because I'm studying a teaching degree a master's of inclusive and special education they were like you're all teachers we're teachers too we're your lecturers we get what it's like um so there was a lot of grace in that which was really good um the the change that i've found um really challenging is is seeing how fearful people are like mm. that's been a really massive change. People are like seeing that people are really scared and I'm a person who still goes out and still like, yeah, okay, I have to sign in and I have to social distance and it's annoying and, but I understand the reasons for it to keep everyone safe. But I, a lot of people are very afraid to be in public or to touch another person or to, you know, breathe on anyone. Like, and that's been really challenging just being confronted with um, the anxiety and fear of other people and um, not letting that affect me too much in the way mm. that I live my life, but also being mindful and like trying to be gracious to other people and that they're going through their own tough times as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess something that stuck out to me last week when I was interviewing uh, Grant was he was talking about um, with change comes inevitably comes loss and loss always often leads to some level of grief. And yeah, knowing and identifying that and being able to cope with that and deal with that, um, yeah, it's it's very easy to brush past it as, you know, drink some concrete and move on. But actually, it is a very real thing that we all need to... Mm figure out how to deal with it in our own way. Um, I guess I also wanted to bring in this week's reading. Um, I think it's in verse 26 or 27 towards the end somewhere, um, where it says that um, if one part of the body suffers, the whole body suffers. Um, and if one part is honoured, we all rejoice. And I guess that's really the essence of what Grant was talking about last week was, is that we're all in this together. I mean, if, if someone is, is hurting, as a community, we get around them and, and we help them in that space. And if someone is doing great or being honoured, as it says in the passage, then we, we lift up to meet them there as well. Um, I think that's, yeah, last week we were talking a lot about, yeah, the power of community and how that, um, yeah, shapes how we deal with these things. Mm. Um, mm. So I guess final question for you guys. Um, has all of this change, all of this uh, difference in how we operate, how we live in, in general life, um, through all of that, I guess, have you discovered anything new about yourself? Have you found yourself changing? Uh, yes, I definitely think I have. I feel like I've found um, more the value in like being vulnerable with, vulnerable with my friends. Um, and just even if uh, I open up a tiny bit, it'll allow them to open up a little bit as well um, and creates really good conversation that um needs to be done more um which i try and do with a lot of my friends um now because i think it's so important to, um to talk about how your well-being is going because it is a big part of who we are and um like making sure it is okay to if you do have a bad day and to talk about with someone you don't have to suffer in silence mm. yeah yeah i think that 
I definitely agree with that. It's, uh, but it's definitely communication. So finding that time to communicate. Um, as busy as our schedules are or as clear as our special schedules are, um, making sure that we're taking the time to talk to people um, and really um, building on that, um, I guess, is the way in which we communicate. So making it meaningful and making it um, direct and, and really sort of good communication, not just a passing little um, how you going, but not really that quick little... Mm. I've had more time for introspection and reflection and uh, reprioritizing and deciding, re, re, re-evaluating my life, looking at what is important to me um, and what I will and won't accept um, from myself and from others um, when, when to – so it's actually been – an opportunity given me the opportunity to know, you know, where to draw the line in the sand. And um, I've, I think the thing that I've discovered is that I am actually quite good at creating boundaries um, and trusting my own instincts. Um, That's, so that's been an interesting thing that I didn't think would come out of this whole time. Um, I think that's just, yeah, because I've had the opportunity to kind of sit with myself and, and think through those things and made good use of that time. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for this. I I hope this has been helpful for everyone else. I know it's been great listening to you guys and hearing what you guys have to say. So thank you so much. This is awesome.